Hello and welcome to the fourth instalment in the Python Beyond Intermediate series. In recent tutorials, we have used the Timeit module to demonstrate performance aspects of Python code. In this tutorial, we will explore how to write our own decorators to time both function calls and blocks of code, and then we will cover the Timeit module and common pitfalls that are to be avoided. First of all, we import time and then from func tools we import wraps. The concept is simple. What we do is we write a generic decorator which will take any number of positional and keyword only arguments. We will record the current time, store this in start, then we call the function with the positional and keyword only arguments. We store the result in an object called result. After that's done, we immediately take the time again. We subtract the start time from the end time to get the total running time. If you've yet to meet decorators, don't worry, we'll cover those in another tutorial on metaprogramming. Wraps is there, otherwise any function that we subsequently call will appear to be wrapper. And indeed, if we write a doc string for any function, we will actually get the empty doc string for the wrapper function instead. This is straightforward enough, and let's test it out on a test function which will count up to a million from the value of x that we pass in. If you weren't aware of this before, you can include underscores in order to separate groups of digits from one another for code visual clarity. You will probably most commonly have come across time.time .time when needing to get a handle on the current time, but here we're using time.perfcounter instead. For all intents and purposes, this provides the highest resolution timer possible on a given platform. It includes time elapsed during sleep states and is system-wide. It's worth noting that the reference point of the return value is undefined, so it's only the difference between the results of consecutive calls that's valid. We can't use this method, though, to measure the time elapsed for execution of a block of code. So let's rewrite our timer using a context manager. In order to be able to use the with keyword, our function needs to implement both dunder enter and dunder exit. We'll cover this in more depth in a context manager tutorial. You can arbitrarily indefinitely nest with statements, and we've included two here as a demonstration. We iterate over range 1 million and write this string to file.text a million times. As mentioned in the introduction, in the deck tutorial, we compared the time taken to rotate a deck versus the equivalent rotation in a list. Time it can be used both from the command line and also from within your program. Here we've imported the public class timer. If you only supply it with one argument, then this is the statement that you're requesting to profile. If you call timer without any arguments, then its default is just to execute pass. A second argument can also be supplied, and this is any setup code that you need to run first. There is a method of this class called timeit, execution of which will result in your statement of code being executed by default a million times. You can pass any number of times that you want to execute your statement that you've supplied as an argument to time it. It's tempting to perform five repeats and then take the mean. What's more useful is to ask for the minimum value. That's to say, we're asking for the quickest execution attempt. This minimizes any interference with the timing accuracy from other processes going on at the same time. What's arguably more useful 
is to run time it from the command line. The M flag passed to Python results in the time it module being imported first and then run as a script. If you don't pass the M flag, then the module is simply run as a script. This tends to ensure that relative imports work correctly. We're going to use timeit on the command line in order to demonstrate some potential pitfalls when considering timing your code. In this first example, the S flag means that the x equals naught that we passed in the first pair of quotation marks is run as the setup code, and it's run once. The x plus equals 1 is the code that's then run a million times and then repeated five times. In this simple example, we can see that each loop of a million executions took 45 nanoseconds. However, it's important to try your best to identify other aspects of even simple examples that could be adding overhead and giving you a falsely slow sense of the execution of your code. We can see that just allocating naught to x as the setup statement takes up close to 10 nanoseconds per loop. Even attribute lookup takes a not inconsiderable amount of time, adding a further 5 nanoseconds per loop. So in total, that's close to 15 nanoseconds of the total 45 nanosecond per loop execution time that we initially arrived at. We've demonstrated that there's roughly a third overhead in this simple example. You should also be very careful when iterating over things. Our setup code for the next example is to make a list of 100,000 noughts. We go into a loop, removing items one by one until the list is empty. But the setup code is only run once at the start. It isn't run once per loop. That's why there's such a massive difference, because we've mistakenly thought that we're profiling one thing when we're profiling something altogether different. If we remove the S flag, we then reinitialize after each loop. I hope this short tutorial on timing your code and on the time it module has been useful. As always, I would appreciate your feedback, and I'd love to hear if you have any suggestions for topics next time. Thank you very much, and like and subscribe to let me know how I'm doing.